my dear brothers and sisters, as a Muslim, we find ourselves, or at least we should, in a situation where we are in, we feel that we are in dire need of knowing how to understand the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We all aware of the famous ayah or the well-known ayah. In fact, Ibn Kathir rahimahullah taala, he says that this is the asl, this is the foundation for the Muslim in following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ That you have in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam a most beautiful example. Especially in a time now where there are so many different ideas, so many different methodologies that you and I are exposed to. And especially our youth and our children. Where ideas seem to prevail over others, the way that you think, the way that you understand the world, the way that you understand religion, or how influential your deen should be in the decisions that you are making on a daily basis. Maybe there is a gap between us and the next generation that come after us. Maybe we assume that our understanding is their understanding and that we take it for granted that they will follow the way or even get better than what we are upon now. But this is a great danger because it could be the case that maybe your son and your daughter, whoever they may be from your close relatives, are actually having a great test, but they don't show that to you. So in your home, they pray with you, they listen to you, but then they have a different life outside completely that you are completely oblivious to. So how important it is for us as fathers, as mothers, as those who have responsibility over the youth to have a connection with the next generation, to then impart this beneficial knowledge this sound knowledge for them to be convinced just as you are convinced that Islam is a superior way to live. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is an example for us all. And part of our shahada is the second part. That I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah. So what does that actually mean and manifest? How does that manifest itself in our lives? The answers might be quite simply, well, to follow his sunnah, which is a correct, is a correct answer. But then again, that's very general. What does it mean to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Is it about the external, how you look? Well, for many of us, or for some of us, that dressing like the Prophet sallam in Arabian clothing, if you like, or the clothing that was worn at the time of the Prophet sallam, is not something applicable for me because of the place I work or the place that I study. So how is it that externally, I'm supposed to display the sunnah and that I'm a follower of the Prophet Muhammad There is flexibility, no doubt, in these issues. But the core of this, the center part of this, a step before that, if you like, is the state of the heart of that individual in wanting to follow that sunnah and understanding how that actually works. So you may find fellow, you know, shallow answers what it means to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So let me give you a couple of examples as the ulama have mentioned what it means to internalize in following the Messenger ﷺ. First of all, they were the best of worshippers upon earth. The Prophets ﷺ were the very best people at worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That ibadah, whether it came in the form of salah, or fasting, or a pilgrimage, or whatever righteous deeds that we understand to be, they were the very best of people concerning that. And this is one aspect of following the way of the Prophet والسلام, is emulating him in his ibadah. How the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam worshipped Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The Salah itself. Pray as you have seen me praying. 
and how many other acts of ibadah that we offer is that in line with the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam not only externally but internally that when you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the state of your heart what is it what is the state of your heart do you have that fine balance between al khawfu wal raja between hope and fear or is it that you have or you're worshiping Allah jalla wa'ala just out of fear and that you have lost hope or that you have just all hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't care about your sins have no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have fallen into another extreme so when you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have this fine balance this is the way of the prophets and this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us how he tells us in the Quran how to worship him yarjuna rahmata that we have hope in his mercy wa yakhafuna adhaba and that we have fear of his punishment so we try to emulate the worship of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and again this is just an idea we don't have the time here to go into great depth but for you to think following the sunnah the sunnah of the prophet alayhi wasallam to emulate him in what and how in how to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also you find how they remembered allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on all occasions which of course is part of how they worshiped allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the day to day i'm talking about out of your salah in times when you face a trial or a test or calamity or even when you receive a blessing when we're talking about a trial or a test not to think that it is only in the form of a calamity of a loss because a trial to any one of us could be a blessing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to you and whether you respond in a grateful and thankful fashion and that if you are ungrateful with regards to that blessing then you have failed that test and could be a source of adab because of the lack of gratefulness you have towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so i'm talking about the things that we do on a daily basis how the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam would deal with the rich and the poor and what do you know about that how the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam would deal with those who had questions that each person had a particular need and he alayhi salatu wasalam would answer their need which was tailored for them how much do we know about that once we start to open these things and what it means to follow the, the sunnah of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam we may then realize how little i know how to actually implement and live by the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to follow the true sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam so after just touching on a few issues like this and i want to now link what i've said about you being convinced not just because we are muslims but you are totally convinced and then want to propagate that and pass that on to the next generation so that your children are essentially guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you'll fulfill your responsibility towards your children another important aspect is to gain beneficial knowledge and that this beneficial knowledge is information taken from the Quran and Sunnah which you have the goal to implement and that you ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to increase you wa qul rabbi zidni ilma Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam this supplication this dua that we should also be making as well in the Quran oh my lord increase me in knowledge so the muslim is never satisfied with the level of knowledge that they have that they're constantly striving struggling pushing to know authentic knowledge so that they can implement that al ilmu wal amal that they have the knowledge and then they have the implementation of that knowledge and this is essentially brothers and sisters after you making dua every day in your salah to guide you to the straight path you must have in line with that some push from yourselves to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you on the firm path the straight path and that can only be with authentic knowledge in following the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he says something very profound concerning being guided and understanding the purpose of your life 
when he says wala sabila ila saadati wal falah that there is no way or path to happiness and success la fi dunya wala fi al akhirah not in this life nor in the hereafter illa ala aidi al rusul except through the hand or by the hands of the messengers i.e. that you follow them wala sabila ila ma'rifat al tayyib wal khabith and that there's no way that you can possibly understand what is good and that what is bad ala al tafsil in detail illa min jihatihim except that you have taken it from them and that you cannot attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah jalla wa ala is happy with you except that you follow their path that goodness in actions and statements and your manners is taken from their guidance fabihudahum muqtadih that through their guidance and by their guidance that you will be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that this is the mizan and this is the scale which we will judge our existence and how successful that person is in how much they are following the prophets alayhi salatu wasalam and how they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let me just finish with for you to go away and to read through surah al-anbiya the prophets and look how and remind yourselves how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided the prophets to being the very best of people from the story of Zakaria alayhi salam and Yunus and Ayyub how they called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at very difficult times let's say from verse 50 onwards read these verses very carefully brothers and sisters to see how the best of people how they called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what made them the most successful people upon earth